Welcome back to my channel guys. Today I wanted to share with you some of the floral fragrances that I'm looking forward to wearing this summer. So obviously all of my fragrances have some degree of floral notes in them, but these ones are very floral specific and a couple of them are more appropriate for the beach, for summer, for the pool, that type of thing. So these are the floral picks that I have chosen that I'm really going to try to wear this summer that I don't always get an opportunity to wear and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first one that I'm looking forward to wearing this summer that I've already been wearing a lot of actually is Oscar de la Renta Bella Rosa. And I've told you guys about this perfume many, many times before. This is an absolutely gorgeous kind of a sandalwood, ambery rose scent. It smells so lovely. This one I bought specifically for the bottle, as you guys know, and it turned out that I actually ended up loving the fragrance inside, like really loving it. It's one of my favorite ones in my collection. Um, yeah, the only complaint I have with this one is that the performance isn't very good. If you spray it on your skin, like I've mentioned before, Within about half an hour, I would say you can't tell that you're wearing a fragrance really anymore. Like if there's a vague, vague remnant left of it. So I do recommend spraying this one on your clothing. If you spray it on your clothing, you will have better longevity. It'll last you for a few hours and it'll be quite strong actually. But you do have to spray it kind of in close proximity and on your clothing to get that effect. But it's lovely, so on the days that I really wanna wear this, I don't mind spraying it a few times. You guys know that I'm not a huge fan of straight up white green florals. They're just not my thing. I do like something that has a little bit of sandalwood or musk or vanilla or something to change it up and add a little bit of um, complexity to it and give it a little bit of depth. So this one's absolutely gorgeous, you guys. I don't recommend it that often simply because it doesn't have the best longevity, which really bothers me. I wish they could make this specific one with better longevity. It would then be one of the greatest floral fragrances that I've smelt in my life. I really, really like it. So that's the first one that I'm really looking forward to smelling is Oscar de la Renta Bella Rosa. So the second one that I'm looking forward to wearing this summer is Dolce & Gabbana Garden. I did have a couple people ask if I could review this one after they saw it in my collection, but I got this one based on the recommendation of one of the YouTubers. Ah, shoot, I can't think of her name right now, but if I can think of her name, I'll link it down below. And as soon as she described the notes, I had to go out and get a sample, or I had to go out and get a bottle for it myself. This is a very creamy, vanilla, nutty kind of a floral. It also has some yellow flowers in it. It's quite a tropical scent. Yeah, this one, you guys, literally smells like a pina colada. So the most notable notes in here are vanilla, coconut, and almond, but they also have ylang ylang and frangipani. So it does smell quite tropical, like, when I smell this, it transports me immediately to a tropical island with coconuts and sitting in the sun. So this is quite coconutty, so I don't know if it would be everybody's cup of tea. It could definitely be um, a little bit too sweet, a little bit too pina colada-ish for some people, I think. Um, and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be able to wear it here at home. For me, I like to wear a lot of fragrances at the beach if they smell appropriate for the beach. If they're very coconutty, I tend not to wear a lot of them at home and I tend to save them for vacation just because I feel like it's more appropriate. I live in Canada, so we are the furthest thing from tropical and sometimes when I wear coconut scents in Canada, it doesn't feel um, appropriate. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I tend to wear more like white florals and stuff like that up here. But yeah, this one, when you spray it on your skin, it actually dries down to a really lovely, creamy, almondy type of a coconut fragrance. So it doesn't stay super strong coconut on your skin. I wouldn't say go blind by this, but I would say definitely try to get your hands on a sample or smell it if you get the opportunity, because it is lovely. So the next one that I'm looking forward to wearing this summer is Victor & Rolf Flower Bomb Dew. So this is a newer flanker of the original Victor & Rolf Flower Bomb. Um, there's one drawback to it, which I'll tell you in a minute, but this is a gorgeous fragrance, you guys. This is basically like a muskier, more powdery, um, slightly fresher version of the original Flower Bomb. So what they've done in here is they've actually made it quite a bit more powdery, but they've also added a note of dewdrop in here, which I don't know exactly what dewdrop smells like, but I can only imagine that it smells like a fresh, kind of a green sense about it. And this is a really lovely fragrance. Um, my only beef with this fragrance is that it doesn't last very long at all. I have sprayed myself about five or six times with this, so generously sprayed myself on my skin, on my clothing, my wrists, my neck, my hair, everything. And in about two and a half, three hours, I feel like I need to reapply it. So it is quite light. Oh, 
yes, it is absolutely gorgeous, but the performance is severely lagging on this. So that is where I prefer the original Flower Bomb. Um, I did find the original Flower Bomb to have quite good performance. I found it to be very, very strong. It would last forever on my clothing. Really learning about myself that I don't like when a perfume doesn't perform. I need to be able to smell myself. I want other people to be able to smell me. Yeah, that's just not the case with this, with this fragrance. But otherwise, it's absolutely stunning. So if you don't mind carrying it with you in your bag and giving yourself a spritz throughout the day, um, then, then this is a really nice one. So that's Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb Dew. So the next one is this really cute little mini that I have. This was actually gifted to me by a friend and this is from the brand Toka and this is called Gia. So you guys can get these from Sephora and I'm sure you can find them on lots of other um, fragrance stores as well. So this one is, this one is just a little, um, container. There's no spray, which I don't like. I, I don't like dabbing fragrances on myself. I prefer to spray them. And I also really don't like roller balls very much either. So that's the only drawback of this little guy. I do wish there was a spray nozzle in there, but this is an absolutely gorgeous little scent, you guys. So this is predominantly a rose fragrance, but there's also pink pepper, tangerine, vanilla, sandalwood, and amber. Very rosy, very, very pretty, but they've added that pink pepper and that tangerine, so it does have a little bit of a spiciness to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, I really, really like this. I really like this fragrance. Yeah, it's so nice. I don't know how to describe it. It's a very nice, fresh, crisp, kind of a floral scent. So I would recommend getting getting your hands on a Gia Toka sample. I will put a picture of the bottle up in the corner for you so you can see what the full bottle looks like. I also really like um, the bottle designs from Toka. I think they've done a really nice job. I think they're very cute, classy, and kind of antique looking as well. So love that little bottle. The next one that I'm looking forward to trying out this summer is Orchid Soleil from Tom Ford. Now I've told you guys before that I do really want to try the uh, Eau de Soleil Blanc or just the Soleil Blanc. However, this smells like it has coconut. Like if I didn't know any better, I would say that this did have coconut. So this is a really um, tropical smelling fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful. There's quite a few white flowers in it. There's tuberose, um, there's lily, but they've also added um, cypress in here, which is kind of like a pine-like, a little bit of a tree kind of a note. They've also added whipped cream, there's chestnut, there's vanilla, there's patchouli, so there's a whole bunch of kind of warm, almost gourmand-like notes in here, in addition to the floral notes. So it's a really interesting and unique spin on a beachy floral scent. And it does to me smell like a beach. Even though there's no coconut in here, it still really is reminiscent for me of being in a beach or on a beach. So yeah, this one's beautiful. I haven't tried it yet. All of Tom Ford's fragrances I find, especially like the summertime fragrances, all have a really unique vibe about them. Yeah, it's just a really unique um, floral beachy kind of a scent. So that one is Orchid Soleil from Tom Ford. And I did just get a little 10 mil travel size. This is from Fragrance Net. So a little 10 mil travel size here. I don't know if that's the color the juice is supposed to be. We'll never know because the real Orchid Soleil is, um, is an opaque container. Not something I feel like I need a full size bottle of, but it is something I'm looking forward to trying this year for sure. The next one is Pure Poison from Dior. So this is primarily a white floral scent, but there is some muskiness to it. This has incredible performance. I've talked about this before in another video. Um, this is a very classy kind of a daytime white floral, but I feel like it would transition well into the evening as well because it does have quite a strong performance as well as that musk. So it's not a super fresh white floral. It's just a really pretty feminine, a little bit mature, kind of a seductive white floral in a sense. Yeah, it's, it almost smells like it could be kind of a mature scent. I don't think this is something I'm going to grab for all the time, but on the skin, this smells very, very nice. It does become a little bit more musky and a little bit more kind of seductive. I think that this would be a winner among men if they were to smell it on your skin. Yeah, and I'm just, I haven't had a chance to wear this out yet, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a chance and seeing what I think, um, actually putting it, putting it to use. So that one is Pure Poison by Dior. Okay, so the next floral fragrance that I'm looking forward to trying this summer is Coach Floral Eau de Parfum. So this is kind of a fresh, fruity floral. It's very mainstream, a little bit generic, but this is one that I had tried a sample of a couple of times, and each time I tried it, I really, really liked it. I just kept going back to it, so that's why I finally got myself a bottle. So yeah, normally I'm not a huge fan of like super mainstream, generic fragrances. 
but this one is quite nice and it does have a little bit of a warmer base it does have some vanilla some sandalwood some woody notes some patchouli so it's not straight up just a fresh floral scent those fresh super green white florals um, don't sit well with me. Like I said, I like something to warm them up. I like something to give them a little bit of depth and a little bit of staying power. And for me, that's what this has. It's a little bit more complex than just being a fruity floral. So it does have some top notes of pineapple, gardenia, and rose. And then you get a little bit of musk, but there's also pink pepper, there's bergamot, there's patchouli, there's a few other things going on in here. Yeah, and on the skin, this is actually quite lovely. The bottle is quite classy and cute looking. It looks nice sitting on your counter. And it also has this really cute little leather flower a peak. And the last really floral fragrance that I have that I'm looking forward to wearing this year is Erin Hibiscus Palm. So I'm sure many of you have smelled this before. This is a niche fragrance. It's one of the most expensive ones I have in my collection. It's absolutely gorgeous. So there's coconut in here, there's hibiscus, there's palm leaf. This is a very luxurious smelling beachy scent. So where a lot of other fragrances um, that have coconut and that are beachy scents tend to be a little heavy into the sunscreen vibe, this is not a heavy, cheap sunscreen vibe type of a scent. It doesn't smell generic. It just smells elevated and luxurious. This is the type of fragrance I would wear to a high-end resort going on vacation. It's such an elegant, sophisticated smelling floral and coconutty scent. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, this isn't one that I wear at home a lot because like I said, I feel like I tend to leave my coconutty scents for more of that beach situation where there's palm trees or I'm at a pool or something like that. Um, but this one to me just makes me feel very classy and very put together. So I do kind of save this one for special occasions and usually special occasions in the summertime or on vacation. Probably because when I bought this, I was in a much warmer location. So I think it reminds me of being there as well. And yeah, it just has a really luxurious, elegant kind of a vibe to it. That is the final floral fragrance that I'm looking forward to wearing this summer. So that was it for today's video. I hope that you guys really enjoyed. Make sure you head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already because I share a lot of things on there that I don't on YouTube. And I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.